Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be working on carving a bear together. This is going to be a tutorial and this is going to be what we're carving. Now, first of all, it's cold out here. Um, so this says we're almost at 30, but that's only because I have this heater going. When I first got out here, this was about 16, 17 degrees. And with the wind chill, they're saying a negative 15 to 17 degrees in the wind. So yeah, it's a cold day. Anyway, who cares, right? You guys are warm at home, hopefully. The plan is to uh, do a tutorial carving up this bear bust. The idea is we're mostly working on fur pattern around the head and carving the head. So the idea is we're gonna carve the head, detail it, and fur, okay? I've had some questions about furring and stuff, and I just figured, you know what, let's just do a full tutorial. So I know this video might be kinda long, but I am gonna walk you guys through step-by-step, step, uh, cut for cut, angles of the saw and all that. We will have two camera angles to help us with this carve. Now, this piece of wood is probably, or was about eight inches across, okay? It was a log, so maybe eh, about six to eight, maybe eight inches across, okay? It is about 12 inches tall, so that's what I'm working with. What are you guys gonna need to make this happen? First, you're gonna need your safety gear. I like safety shoes, steel toe boots, your chaps. I like wearing gloves, a dust mask. I prefer the RZ dust masks, by the way. If I have it set up, I recently became an affiliate with RZ, so I will have a link down in the description below. You guys shop through that link, and uh, it'll help support the channel, help support me, and I really do appreciate it. If it's not there yet, continue to check back, because we'll have it there really, really soon. It's gonna be uh, underneath the description, right around the, the PayPal link that I've put up, so you guys can check that out. Now, safety gear. You know, if you're running a gas saw, it's good to have earmuffs, something to protect your eyes. If you don't have a jaw horse, I have a video on how to clamp this guy down. If you do have a jaw horse, hopefully you've upgraded to the wood on the clamps. Again, there's videos on how to do that. Now, chainsaw. The majority of the work I'm getting done with a 12 inch bar. All right, quarter pitch, 12 inch bar. It's a roll nose, this is not a dime tip bar. This is on a 200. If you have an MS-170, um, you can basically do the same thing. There is a difference in bar size though, okay guys? Inch bar here, quarter pitch, 43 gauge chain. This is a small nose. If you have a 170 or a 180, the bar that's on that is more than likely gonna be a 3 8 pitch, 43 gauge chain, okay? Here is the difference in nose size. See the difference? It's still doable, but you'll be able to get into a tighter spot with this bar. Now, if you have a dime tip bar, you can also use that when we do the furring. Again, mine's on a battery saw. So, just letting you guys know chainsaw wise. Coming over here to the power tools. The majority of our work will be done with the regular bar, okay? But, when we get into the face, we get detail in the face. We are gonna do all our details with this quarter inch shaft, half inch green flame burr from saber tooth tools okay all my burrs are saber tooth tools that's how we cut in the eyes the ears we clean things up all right do some of the nostrils and the nose and clean up our fur pattern after that it is a sando flex now this is an extension i'm working on hopefully we can get these out here before summer hits um, i was talking to my guy he's got stuff ready to go so maybe soon we will have these extensions available um those are pretty much the tools. That's what we're gonna need. And a torch, some kind of torch to burn your piece. All right, guys? So like I said, full tutorial. And I just wanna disclose, this is a full labor of love. It is freezing out here, but I love and I appreciate you guys hitting subscribe, liking my videos, leaving comments, leaving feedback, becoming members. I just, I really appreciate you guys. And you know what? To me, that's like, hey, I gotta make sure I'm putting forth the effort out here, freezing my butt off, but to make sure you guys can have a video here on Saturday helping you grow your skills in chainsaw carving, right? Help you guys get better, help you in encourage you guys to try some new techniques and uh, you know, just go for it. Sometimes it's all about just making that first cut and uh, getting in there and making it happen. So hopefully this video will help you along with all that. Big shout out to everybody that's a member right now. Big shout out to those of you who've already uh, decided to pitch in and help with the vintage chainsaws we're gonna be working on. All right, guys, Whew. lots of talking here in the beginning. I do apologize. Let's, uh, let's get our safety gear on and uh, let's get gripping and ripping. 
All right, guys, so this is going to be in real time for now, but we will speed up here and there to try and shorten the length of this video. Right here, I'm using a Dixon wood crayon to kind of sketch out the top showing our first cuts. This crayon and other tools and things will be linked down below through Amazon. You guys purchase through those links to help support the channel. Also, we'll have a link to the RZ dust masks and a link through Hall's Forma chainsaws. If you guys buy through those links provided, again, they're affiliate links and uh, I get a little portion of whatever you know, you purchase. So thank you. All right, guys, we're getting ready to make that first cut. This is going to be an angled cut down and kind of away from the log. Now, as you make cuts, think triangle and wedges. All right. Those are the basic shapes you're cutting away. Here, we're plunging the bar in kind of, as you can see on the left, we go down about halfway of the bar. As you pull down, you pull away from the head. This is not just like a straight cut down. It's down and now start pulling back away from the head where that line is you created. I'm showing you straight, angled. Okay, so now we're angling away, following the line we made, not where that cut is at the top, okay? Look at the details in the pictures, or in the video. Why am I working the saw back and forth? It's not to have a better cut or anything. It's so that I can feel this line right here with the nose of the bar, you can actually feel it so you don't overcut too much into the ear. A little angle cut, revealing more of the ear, cutting to that line we already created, revealing more of the ear. All right, so now as you look, there's our ears, right? Just gonna go ahead and knock the corners off quick, kind of clean them up. So here we're cutting into the underside of the ear just until you hit like the head, do an up cut. Now be careful of kickback, guys. It's very real. We're using the end of the bar, getting close to the nose. You might hit it. The saw will run up. Have a good grip. Be ready for anything. Here we are at the back of the head. We're kind of angling in, kind of shallow, and we're going to do an angle cut up if you look at the left, right? Pop that piece out. Now kind of clean up down to your line if there's an overcut line, rounding the back of the ears just a little, taking off hard edges, cleaning it up. All right, front side of the bear looking back, cleaning up behind or between the ears and in the front of the ears here just a little bit. These are just clean up cuts. You kind of have to feel out your own piece. We want to make the top of the head kind of rounded. Pay attention to the orientation of the bear because I will be moving it around as we make different cuts. Now we're going to cut the forehead or the front face of the bear in. And here I like to go almost full depth of the height of the bar little more than three quarters. Now as we cut in for the nose, it's thin and we angle it back so it's a little bit deeper to that line. Notice how I look around the log and see where my line ended so I can get that piece cut off, right? We're trying not to overcut into where the eyes and the face are going to be. Drawing a little bit of a horribly centered line and figuring out the size of our snout. Make adjustments as you go, guys. Just, you know, Keep drawing it on, keep making adjustments. So there's two angles here. The bar is tilted and the saw is pulled at an angle. Straight, angled, angled. All right, so we're angling down and out and we're also angling. So it's like two angles right there, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Looking at an angle here to start cutting underneath. If you look on the left, the back of the saw is high, nose of the bar is low, so we're cutting down into about the center of the snout, stopping, pulling out. The back of the saw is high, and we're coming in to meet that line, trying to, you know, create pretty much the same cut just on the reverse side. All right, starting on one side of the bear, we're gonna lop off a little bit of the corner there. Remember, as you come down here, it's not straight. You're pulling away just a little so you don't cut into that snout you just angled. See the angle in there? And you gotta try to do it on the other side. This is where sometimes moving the saw front to back just a little bit can help you feel that line until you get more practice in, okay? This one, the lines didn't connect, so now I gotta come in from the front, clip it off there just a little. On to the length of the snout. As I'm cutting down, the bar is angled in. Top angled away, bottom angled in. So it's just a slight angle cut. Not a lot, just a little. Now it's time to start removing some material under the head in the neck area. We're making an up cut with the upper side of the bar. Here you will feel kickback, all right? So have a good grip on the saw. 
gonna go in and just try to level out or even out these sides here just a little again minor touch-up stuff guys don't be afraid to kind of do little things as you go you know clean things up make them tidy here i'm trying to reveal a little bit more of the neck sometimes one side's easier than the other to do feel it out play around with it don't be afraid to make a cut just make the cuts small right if it's small it's easier to adjust with a different cut if it's large well you know bigger cuts make for bigger mistakes smaller cuts make for smaller mistakes keep that in mind rounding that forehead so we don't have that straight hard edge now if you look on the left you can see the profile of the bear there now it's rounding over where his eyebrows are right and here with the nose, I'm kind of cutting in behind where I think the eyebrows are going to be. This isn't furring. I'm actually just removing some material so his eyebrows will stick up off the top of his head just a little bit. This also can be achieved with the flame burr later on. Or your saws in your hand. If you do it now, it's quicker. And then we just continue to shape and, uh, you know, kind of make it flow together. Remove a little bit of material from between those eyebrows. Because this bear's got eyebrows. He just does. And just clean up work after that. Look at your piece. You're rounding it, smoothing it. Moving right into the snout. We're going to knock this corner off. Bring it back to the front of the face. Okay. Kind of cleaning up my front cut. It was too much of an angle, so I'm kind of making that a little bit more square. Next, moving right into the nose, nostril area. We are using the side of the saw. Look on the left to see the angle at which the saw is down, right? Down low. Keep in mind, you get lots of kickback here, so be careful, be ready. Now we're going to do some sanding or scraping with the nose of the bar. We're just scraping away material and rounding it over. You can use your die grinder if you'd like, or your sander, but it's much quicker. Your saw is already in your hand. Just do the work, keep it rolling. Moving into the mouth, again, we're kind of using the side of the teeth all right the side of the bar kind of just coming in a little bit of an undercut there right there it gets away from me a little bit but it's all right it still looks good now this is where you got to be careful using that top side of the bar because i can jump right away and you can end up making more of a cut than you really want so just pay attention scraping again rounding the lower portion of the chin you can leave more wood. You can, you guys, you can do your own thing. It's kind of just, you know, a get started sort of guidelines. So if you look on the left, we're using the bottom side of the nose. And this is making a little bit of a concaved look on the snout. I'm trying to get rid of the angle at the top of the snout. So it'll be a little bit more of a straight, squared off looking piece right here. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. All right, so we're just sort of scraping and removing material. Here we're kind of concaving the front of the face a little bit for where the eyes are going to be. You can already kind of see what we're going for. So here we are making an up cut to the lower side of the head. All right, this is going to be like part of the neck leading into the top of the shoulders. This is just a bust, um, a bare bust. So we're just kind of going to get like neck shoulders and upper chest area done that's all we're doing that's all we're shooting for in this piece not a full bear just that upper portion i see a lot of heads people are carving and hopefully this will help you just kind of improve on the head so here we're plunge cutting in at an angle kind of removing the front okay a lot of this stuff is going to be like you got to feel it out picture you know where the shoulders would be for arm placement which obviously we don't have any arms so they're just kind of going to be down at attention his arms would be down to his side if this was a full piece all right so double time here just for a few minutes just cutting in rounding and smoothing okay cleaning up your cuts drawing in the front and sides of the arm for the chest area we're going to cut in and kind of remove material separating the arms from the chest and body. That's what's going on here, I think. No, we're still rounding up for the shoulders and neck. <laughs> so clean up, clean up stuff, right? Got to give him a neck so he's not all shoulders. Kind of following my line in and down just a little bit, rounding the front, 
right shoulder into the bicep area in and round it down again this bear would be standing with like his arms to his side sometimes as you work you'll be able to see where and how and when you need to remove more pieces a lot of this is just practice guys and uh you know we can all use a little more practice right even my work here, move down to the other side, removing that piece to kind of reveal sort of, uh, not sort of, revealing some of the arm and removing some of that front chest that's working its way down to the belly. Now what I'm doing here is I'm pointing out with the bar and I'm making the cuts to make fur that looks like it's laying over, right? We're creating this layers, layers of furring right here in the neck area where it's dense. He's got like these fat rolls or fur rolls going down and across the neck. I know it's tough to see on the right. Hopefully we'll have a better shot here in a minute. On to the other side. So I'm kind of getting to the back side of the head or neck and drawing in a line. See, sort of like a S kind of bend. This is the fur in the neck to the chest area coming in, okay? Now if we remove this material for the upper shoulder area, it really makes everything kind of pop. So it makes that fur like it like, look like it's standing on its own for his neck. And now we've revealed the top of the arm shoulder area. Hopefully this stuff makes sense and you guys are able to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying the video, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Especially if this is helping you guys out. Also, if you want to share your work... Look up the page, Kyle Hall Woodworker, New Carvers on Facebook. Answer all the questions, everything. Answer them all, and I'll let you guys in the group. You can share your work with other subscribers and myself. It's great because everybody can just see how everyone is progressing with their carvings and encourage one another, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool group. So be sure to check that out if you guys are on Facebook. Once that neck furring is done, kind of just going to go in here, outline where the arms, shoulders, down to the arms are going to be like that. And then once that's done, basically I'm just going to remove the bark and round it up and over. All right, we're just going to kind of remove bark and sort of round the piece a little bit. And then we're going to move right into furring. All righty, we've got him clamped by the neck. It's not a very big piece. Here we are laying in the fur. So the top is overlaying the lower, right? Everything's kind of overlapping. That's what we're going for on this piece. If you can make the little S marks, it gives it a little bit more of a flowy, somewhat realism look. Now you can continue to go over it and hit the spots that you've missed, filling in. All right, this is the side of the bar. If you look on the left, you guys can just see the bar in a couple instances. These are not straight square cuts. When you do straight square cuts, they look exactly like that, a straight square cut. They don't look like fur. So practice your furring. If you haven't done a lot of furring, you're gonna be burning your forearms up, all right? So take breaks, take your time, and uh, you know, give yourself a little little chance to, to practice and, and get better at it. Mine's not perfect, but you can kind of see where I'm going with it, and it gives you that nice look like fur is overlapping fur. All right, looking at the shoulder and arm for a fur pattern, I kind of just curve it down and around. All right, depending on how the arm is, just think about how you want that fur to lay, what direction should it be going in. I don't always nail it like how it's supposed to be, um, but I like to try to give it some angles so it's not just like these straight cuts. And honestly, if you want a more realistic fur pattern, it really is important how much time you spend on it. Mine is okay. I could still bust out the dime tip bar and clean it up a lot more. So this is just giving you like a starting point to bring your fur pattern from just these straight nose flat cuts to using the side of the bar and making these side angle flowing furring cuts, okay? Again, look at it. We're just kind of scraping with the side and we're just working it in. I'll admit, using one side of the bar is easier than the other. It just will be. Your natural movement makes one side of the saw easier to use than the other, you know, because of the handle layouts, because you're left-handed, right-handed, whatever it may be. So it's all about practicing. That difficult side, you know, will get easier with time and practice. 
All right, furring in the back. In this case, I'm having the top layers look like they're overlapping the lower. So we start at the head, work our way down. I'm angling it in. I do not always do all my fur patterns this way. This is the way we're doing it here, though. This is something you could play around with, though. Angle them in different angles, try different things, see how they look for you. I'm not creating a tutorial for you to make direct copies. I'm creating tutorials to give you ideas so that you can make your own pieces, your own products, and be able to, uh, you know, create your own style. Because really, if, like, the best part is, is having your own style once you start creating your own art and getting comfortable with it. So, sadly, we have lost for just a few moments here the footage on my shoulder furring in the face but it's basically the same idea as everywhere else i'm starting high working low and we're making smaller shallow cuts little little cuts so the fur on the face doesn't look as long as the fur on the arms a shorter line means like a shorter hair at least that's that's the way i see it shorter fur so we're just making these short shallow kind of scraping marks down the side and, uh, you know, you get your face furred, but work your way around, try to keep your uh, fur kind of going at the same angle and just work your way, you know, all the way down one side and then move and repeat on the opposite side. So I think you guys will be able to see the angles here for furring. You can see the back of the saw is low, the nose of the bar is high, right? We're scraping back using the one side of the bar, not the full tip or the nose. That's only one side of the chain is cutting, not both sides of the chain, okay? So keep that in mind. Boy, those camera angles on my shoulder would have been awesome. But I believe the battery was dead. Batteries were dying quick, guys. It was freezing out. Just some shots so you guys can see profiles and up close there a little bit. Now, honestly, with wind chill, it was like 17 below and 15 degrees, no wind chill. So it was a cold day to begin with. So here we're taking that flame burr, okay? on a die grinder again guys most of these tools i'll have linked down below the same or something similar i run Sabretooth tools you guys can jump on over to sabertooth.com punch in code hall 10 h-a-l-l-10 see if you still get a discount i don't make any money off those purchases it's not an affiliate link i just promote their stuff because you know what i do i like their tools and uh, i worked with them in the past so i continue to promote it no worries just using this to round our ears and round things over you guys might hear a kid screaming. That would be my son playing in the background. Good times. Anyway, just keep working it, shaping it, round things over. Bears aren't square. They're rounded. Ears are done. Move to the face. All right, so we're making eyebrows. So we're rounding over our cut marks. We're shaping in those eyebrows just a little bit. If you keep the center portion of the eyebrow closer to the inside of the face high and the outside low, he'll have more of a concerned, sad you know, cute, cuddly look. Nice thing with this, you can connect your fur lines up nice and tight, nice and close with the nose of that burr, okay? Overcut mark right here on the snout. Clean it up. Clean the top of the snout out. We shouldn't have scraping marks from the saw. We shouldn't have any of that. Clean it up, sand it up, make it look smooth, make it look nice. And it's time for nostrils. Plunging in, pulling down, and away. In, down, away, and up a little bit. You can see the movement there. All right? Boom. Don't just go straight in. You'll get the death wobble, and things will start shaking all over and jack your, your nose up. So be careful of that. Any little cleanup spots that are, you know, hard edge, clean them up. I'm making an undercut. It makes these eyebrows stand out, as you guys can see on the left, maybe a little better. All right, so now we're thinking about our eyes and eyebrow area as we're working here. How do we want this to look, right? Connecting our fur pattern up a little bit tighter. Thinking about eyeball, eyeball placement and stuff. Plunging in. Keep it moving, right? Just up under the eyebrow. In, arching up, down to the side. Keep it moving. Go to your line. All right, it's kind of hard to describe because you guys should be able to just kind of see it. This will take practice. You got to have a good grip on the tool, right? Because it wants to fight you. It really does. So have a good grip. Take your time. Cut these eyes in. Now, if you have a crosscutter burr from Sabretooth, you could just plunge that in, call it a day, be done. 
Um, I do that a lot with other bears. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy, right? They're not all cut and have their own style. Sometimes you just bang those out, so you've got product. Here, though, I'm cutting in an upper eyelid, which will now make that eyeball a little bit smaller and a little bit more of a different shape. It's not perfect, but a little more realism to it, right? You're adding more features. Is it a realistic bear? No, it's not. I know it's not, okay? But it adds more realism to your bear. Things we're practicing, even me. All right, cleaning out the eye socket area and things. Boom, now we have more layers. He has more depth now that he has an eyebrow, an eyelid, an eyeball. All right, we're plunging in here for the ear so it's not just flat. And I'm just making an arch. That's it. Boom. Something quick, something simple. Face details and things are done. Take that flame bird, go through, hit those overlapping lines, right, for the neck and chest. And you can even put lines on those to give it more of a textured, furring look. Again, play around with it, guys. Make the piece your own. Don't be afraid to evolve and try new things, all right? It's the whole point. I mean, like, you're creating your own art, so you can't be afraid to go off the path a little and try something. It might work, it might turn out awesome, or it might turn out, you know, pretty goofed up, but somebody will love it somewhere, especially if you're looking to sell pieces. People love, there's a piece for everybody. There really, really is. All right, guys, done with the die grinder. Moving in with our Sando Flex for the first time. Go ahead and just flap sand everything. Try to get rid of as much of the little furs and smooth things out and, uh, you know, work that piece over. Again, I'm going to be working on an extension in Sando Flex replacement pieces, okay? Uh, hopefully, hopefully by this spring or summer we can get these. I've been saying this for a while, I know, but life gets busy. Hopefully I can get these things together because I think they're going to be a couple uh, great accessories to use with this Sando Flex and your drills. I really would be interested to hear how many of you would be interested in those attachments, accessories, right? Refill things and the uh, long shaft for the Sando Flex. I think we have the stuff to maybe do six of them, um, six of each or so, but you know, we just got to get things coordinated and, and really let me know, leave me some feedback. Let me know if you guys would be interested. So once that's done and sanded, go ahead, take your torch and just burn the crap out of pretty much everything. Um, this guy is, is frozen because it's freezing out and he still has quite a bit of moisture in him. So it's like, I got to dry it out with the first burn, go over it a second time and burn the crap out of it again. Now, once the burn is to the desired color, um, we take that Sando Flex again. It doesn't have to be full speed and we go through and we remove the dark soot, okay? Now, here's the thing. You can Sando Flex it once, get rid of all the fuzzies and paint in black. You can Sando, Fle Sando Flex it once uh, hit it with the torch lightly, removing all and every fuzzies, paint it black. Or torch it again a second time, Sando Flex lightly, and then just paint the eyes and put a little black on the nose. And, uh, you know, call it a bear and be done with it. Totally up to you guys how you finish your piece, though, but those are just a couple of options for you. All right, guys, here it is. Check it out. I want to give you guys some close-up shots with the piece all done, Okay. I know it might be tough to see, but this could help with angles in the face. Now, obviously, we haven't added any color. Everything is burnt, but I would probably paint the tip of his nose black, put a little black in his eyes with some white dots, just to kind of bring him to life that much more. You can always spray paint the whole piece black. I like to leave the sides and part of the snout bare wood if I paint him black. But it's totally up to you how you guys finish your piece. Just trying to give you guys some examples of uh, angles for furring as you work yourself around your bear, you know, and uh, different angles with the saw, creating different looks. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you made it this far and this video has helped you, be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. When you guys hit subscribe, hit that bell and hit all. Make sure YouTube notifications are on. Something cool, fun fact, this channel is at average we have the average amount of subscribers who have hit the bell hit all and turned on their youtube notifications that's awesome it's awesome to be in that group i will say i would like us to be above 
average. And I say us because it's your guys' participation that'll put us above average, making sure you turn all those notifications on. All right, guys? Really hope this helps you guys out, though. Leave me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Check out some videos popping up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.